There you go, taking my line again. Come on now. <laughs> well, happy spring to everybody this time of year. Things are super busy around here as we're gearing up to grow more. What about you guys? Let us know in the comment section below because uh, I just feel like there's so much to do right now. The temperatures are warming up. It's actually been very beautiful, nice blue skies, and we're popping some seeds and trays and in the ground. And we're doing that again today. And if you're looking for a really good guide to help you out with knowing what to plant and when, we highly recommend the Homesteaders of America guide. They have one for each month based on when your last frost date is. It kind of gives you some really good ideas of what to plant. Like based on us, our last frost date average is usually around is usually at the beginning of April. So we usually some, some of our season extension techniques we can have some wiggle room with that and I really try to experiment and push the envelope a little bit to see what we can do but some of the things that we can plant right now especially direct sowing are some of the root crops like your your radishes your beets and speaking of radishes one of my favorite ones you like radishes yeah you like radishes let us know I like the Saxon too and they 18 George I don't speak French I think that's French so that's another one that we liked as well as the early scarlet as well as the cherry bale. Those are, are some really good radishes to grow. And one of the reasons I like to grow those in particular is I really like to grow things that have a, a short maturity date. And those are really good for that. So even like growing those in the summer, some a couple of those, you can have those ready in like 18 to 20 days. So that's a really quick turnaround. So a number of things that we are planting today, we're going to be transplanting or we're going to be planting seeds in our seed trays from Bootstrap Farmer. And those will be seedlings that will start at starts that will ultimately be transplanted a little bit later. And we're going to start squash. I know that sounds pretty crazy to some of you, but uh, we like to start our even a lot of our plants indoors as seeds and then transplant them outside, including squash. So we've had some really good success with the squash, the lemon squash, and we get pretty much most of our seeds from Baker Creek, and we'll be saying a lot about those. We also like to do some of these, and these like your patty pan type squash, as well as some zucchini, and then your just your normal yellow straight neck, or yeah, straight neck squash. Those are pretty prolific. So we're gonna start those. And we've had really good success with starting our squash, squashes early, and then if we need to, if a frost does come once we transplant them outside, we just cover them. But we've noticed that with starting them early, it gives them a chance to grow and to be strong plants. So that way it gives them more of a resistance to things like the pest and uh, other things from killing them. So let's get our squash started. You ready? Yep. Let's squash it. One of the things that I really, really recommend is buying really good quality seed trays and plugs. So many years I've made the mistake of buying the cheapos, the El Cheapos as I like to call them, at just uh, your local <laughs> box store and uh, they just don't last long. So for the, about the same money that you're going to spend on the cheapos, just go ahead and get the quality ones. And uh, we really recommend Bootstrap Farmer and we'll provide their information in the show notes below but these trays they they just last so much longer and they're just so much sturdier and you don't have to worry about them just breaking in the first season so really like them <clears throat> so say if you go ahead and do a tray of the straight neck squash i'll go ahead and do the zucchini and we'll do two other trays of the squash we'll do one of the lemon and then one of these uh these white patty pan looking squash there all right how many in each hole Two or one? Typically do two in each hole just to uh, ensure the germination or increase the chances of germination. So um, let's go with that. Appreciate your help today. You're welcome. With germination in mind is another reason why we do the transplants instead of just direct sow outside. I know if I'm transplanting a plant outside, it is going to be there. Sometimes you put seed direct sow and it's not where you want it to be. It doesn't really always pop up. 
I know you may be wondering how many squash plants are you going to be growing there? So each of these sales here that we're going to be using is 50. So Sayla, if we're doing four trays that have 50 sales in each, how many sales and how many squash plants will that be? Okay, so if you had one in each, you had one pop up in each tray, in each little cell, mm -hmm. that and that would be 50. Mm -hmm. And 50 plus 50 is 100. Mm -hmm. And then plus two more 50 is 200. That's exactly right. So we will have hopefully two, at least 200 squash plants here. And uh, some we'll be using to sell to our customers. Some we'll eat ourselves. And you know what? They'll be extra even for our chickens to eat. And even our goats. Don't our goats like to eat the squash? Yep. So that's producing not just for us, but for other families, as well as for our animals on the farm. <laughs> You're moving faster than me. Speed it up, old man. Alright, well, got your squash, and next you're doing the lemon one. Yep. And I'm gonna do this zucchini. S Q U. I know how to spell squash. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> what you trying to say? I'm just a grunt. <laughs> Muscle head. Can't spell squash. S Q U A. Yes. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, you really don't know how to soak squash, do you? Pick things up, put them down. Smoking me again with how fast you're doing that. Come on, old guy. Getting serious now. You're putting your hair up. Like Rambo when he ties his thing around his head to get serious, ready to go. Or like uh, over the top and he turns the hat back. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone and over the top. You can watch that movie. Hmm? You can watch that movie. It's not scary. Are you sure you're not being sarcastic? Yeah, that's when he arm wrestles in that movie. Have you seen Over the Top? This movie when Sylvester Stallone is like in this arm wrestling tournament. Pretty cool. I haven't seen it in a while. I think it's kid appropriate. Squash. S Q U A S A. <laughs> hey. Oops, did I mess you up? <laughs> It's gonna be hard to read mine. Yeah, you messed favorite. me up. Whoops. All right, so we got our squash done here. We're finishing at the same time. I caught it. How'd I catch up with you? You sure you got up with me? I did. I did put seeds in here. I didn't just, just put dirt on. They all caught up. All right, another thing about the Bootstrap Farmer trays is they also have a lot of neat colors for their trays, like this green one here. Next, we're gonna be doing watermelon. And we haven't been really successful in the past with growing watermelon, have we? <laughs> no, but uh, I do remember. Do you remember? Back when we went to the Heirloom Expo out in California, and it was just you and me for the first trip that we took out there and we got a whole bunch of watermelon. We were staying at this place and uh, we just ate watermelon a lot. Mm. And when I, I even made dinner with watermelon. Didn't yep. Actually, we had watermelon with our dinner. Yes, I remember that. <laughs> and pancakes. We ate pancakes like every single day. <laughs> we didn't do it every day. Come on now. Almost every day. <laughs> I did make a lot of pancakes 
and watermelon and egg breakfast type meal for you. Yes. <laughs> do you guys do breakfast for dinner? <laughs> we do on a weekly basis, but we don't do them with watermelon on a weekly basis. <laughs> also remember the second time that we went out to the expo, we got to talk to Miss Shani and the whole, our whole family got to go out this time and she was telling us a lot of different things, neat things about growing watermelon. All right, Shannon, next, if you could show us some of the varieties that you would suggest for people like us who are growing in areas that are hot, humid, and also get a lot of moisture at times. Right, heat, humidity, and moisture um, can be tough with watermelons, so picking a regionally adapted variety that can do well with those conditions is ideal. So Carolina Cross is this giant variety, red flesh, really nice firm flesh, it's got a great flavor, and it's going to handle your Carolina or Georgia or Florida type weather a lot better. Um, there's other varieties that we can find. Um, Dixie Queen is another one that does well in the south and the more humid parts of the south. Dixie Queen does really well. And then um, another one, I don't believe we have it out at the moment, but I'll just tell you about it. It's called Georgia Rattlesnake. So try Georgia Rattlesnake. That's another one. Beautiful crimson flesh. So delicious. And it's um, it's got uh, heat, humidity, and moisture tolerance uh, that can't be beat. So give those a try. It's got to be a multifaceted approach. You've got to create the right conditions and you've got to choose the right varieties. That's why these heirlooms are so important um, in keeping them around because we want to keep those those super heat and humidity tolerant watermelon varieties around for, for gardeners like you in, in your more extreme climates where um, if we keep with just a few hybrids that are well, you know, reasonably adapted to a wider range, then we don't have those specifically adapted varieties. So let's keep our Georgia rattlesnakes alive. Let's keep our um, Dixie Queens alive. Let's keep our Carolina cross varieties alive. So that means save your seeds, share them with your neighbors, um, grow them at your farmer's market, get your uh, neighbors and your, and your customers to fall in love with these old heirloom varieties so we can keep them around and keep them alive. Guys, this is very important that we have all these varieties that are all from around the world and it's important that we take part in preserving these because if not, they go away. So we each have a part to play, whether you're purchasing for people growing them or you're actually buying seed and growing them yourself. One more last question, Shannon. Mm -hmm. I want a watermelon that's really, really sweet. Ooh, what would be one? Because I, really, I like sweet. Really sweet. Yeah, okay, if you want one? like the most sugary sweet, you got to go with Sweet Dakota Rose. Ooh. Sweet Dakota Rose. That sounds it good. Is super sugary sweet. <laughs> okay, so maybe we can try some of that later on. Oh yeah. Alrighty. Alrighty, so we have our watermelon started and based on Shani's advice, we tried to pick watermelon varieties that work best for our area. Bummed out that the water, uh, what is it called? The orange gold, yeah, that was my favorite one that I really liked from at the expo. So I think regretfully that's not one that works out for us. So we started, which one did you start? I did the Blacktail Mountain watermelon. There we go. I did the Carolina Cross as well as the sugar baby and the georgia rattlesnake so based on the humidity and conditions that we have here i'm thinking those would be what works best for us and we're doing a number of varieties of different things and to see which ones really work for our area and then we just gradually start weaning down and focusing on the specific varieties we want of the different different types of produce that we're growing so now that we have our watermelon done now it's time to do our cucumbers and how we've been growing our cucumbers is uh, a way that I have found to be really, really beneficial. And it's similar to how we do the tomatoes. We're going to start them in our trays here. And then we're going to transplant them into like places like here in our greenhouse. And then we're going to be growing them up the tomahooks like that. That way it's so easy to see what is on there, what fruit is on there. And, and at a eyesight level to be able to easily harvest it. And uh, one of the first farms that I saw doing cucumbers like this is Honey Tree Farm. Not too far from us, our friends Casey and Tori. 
the first time I saw tomatoes grown like that was from Curtis Stone. We were doing the hard pruning method. Big fan of that. So let's get our cucumbers started. All right, I'm gonna finish filling up these trays. If you could tell everybody which cucumbers that we're growing and your plan for cucumbers that you wanna grow. Okay, so the cu cucumbers that I would like to grow are the dragon eggs. Mommy grew these, I think it was last year or the year before, and they were very good. We're also trying the miniature white, I think you, that's how you pronounce it. And, cause I'm not good at reading in cursive things. And then we have the China Jade because these are half and then these are half. And then we have the Market Moore 76. And one more cucumber that we're doing is the Tender Green Burpless Cucumber. And this is one that is supposed to be bitter free uh, as well as it doesn't give you like that, that burp feeling that you can have with cu uh, cucumber. So it's another one that we're gonna be adding. I'm really excited about growing these in our greenhouse. We actually have this one that we're in right now as well as our high tunnel that our chickens have been throughout the winter, just fertilizing it and adding this that really good manure as well as their chicken feathers and things like that. So I look forward to seeing what that produces with the soil as far as fertility and what we can grow in there. We're gonna have a set of group cucumbers that we're growing here in this greenhouse as well as that high tunnel. But I'm also pretty excited because we have strawberry plants that I transplanted in here, what, maybe a week ago, a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, something like that. And I'm already seeing flowers and little tiny strawberries on them. Super exciting. Strawberries are my favorite. Another thing that I want to mention is that it's really important to make sure that you have good quality potting mix. The seed shell in itself provides the seed what it needs to plant as it starts to germinate, but after it, that germination period, many of your like heavier feeding plants like tomatoes really require soil with a potting mix with more nutrients in it. Case in point, Recently, I just started some tomatoes in some just some regular old potting mix that I, that I bought at the store. They started, but uh, you know what? They didn't look quite well. So I transplanted them into some of the really good soil that we get from our friends at Dirt Craft Organics, and there's a significant difference. As you can see here, this is the ones that I started, and they're still in just the regular old potting mix, and these are the ones just a week and a half after I transplanted them into the Dirt Craft Organics potting mix, you can see there's a drastic difference. And lastly, we're gonna be starting various types of greens. And for our greens, we like to use the cells that have multiple, even more cells in these trays. We like to use the 128 one and it works out really well. Has more than the 50 and the 60s that we tend to use and that works really well for lettuces specifically. And for our we've had, past couple years, we've had a market garden on our farm and one of our most profitable items has been our salad mix. 
And in our salad mix, we do a couple of different lettuces. We'll also grow arugula in there, which arugula we do a direct, so there's no, there's no transplanting of arugula. But just adding the combination of those two, and sometimes we'll throw kale in there and Swiss chard, just really helps the flavor, uh, the salad flavor, just be really ba balanced and just, just something different than you're gonna go buy at the stores. There's a definitely a different taste to homegrown greens than you will taste at the store. And I was really inspired a couple of years ago by the work of Ray Tyler and the things that he does and his team on his farm at Rose Creek Farm. And his rows of just his salad mixes is just absolutely beautiful. It's like a work of art. And not only is it beautiful, it's also a pretty efficient farm. Well, we're gonna wrap this up. And uh, cause the sun is coming out and it's starting to warm up here in the greenhouse. So we need to get this done. But let me know in the comments section below, what are some things that you are starting right now for the growing season? Back to work guys. You're doing a great job, Sailor. <laughs>